In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Bible study tonight from uh, the Gospel of St. Luke, uh, chapter 2. Uh, the outline of the chapter The birth of our Lord Jesus Christ from verse 1 to 7, then the praise of the angels, glory in the highest, as well as the vest of the shepherds from chapter from verse 8 to verse 20, circumcision of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 21, then the presentation to the temple from 22 to 24, the prophetic, prophetic statements of Simeon and Anna the prophetess from 25 to 38. The Holy Family returns to Nazareth from 39 to 40. The boy Jesus amazes the scholars when he was 12 years old from 41 to 50. Jesus advances in wisdom and favor or grace from 51 and 52. So, we will not be able to cover all chapter, so maybe we'll cover half of it until verse 26. It's 52 verses, so we'll cover half of it today. Uh, so let's read verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Crinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own cities. So St. Luke began the story of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ with the phrase in those days. Which days? The previous chapter spoke about the birth of John the Baptist, the Annunciation of uh, Archangel Gabriel to Zechariah, Annunciation of Archangel Gabriel to St. Mary. So in the time in which the Baptist was born, the Lord Jesus Christ was conceived in the womb of St. Mary. So in those days, what happened? Augustus uh, Caesar called for census. One of the characteristics of the Gospel of St. Luke, he used the term in those days several times. And you have here many references when actually he used this uh, uh, phrase in those days. And St. Luke actually sets the historical time for the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ during the reign of the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus. Caesar Augustus reigned from 27, 28, 29 before Christ to 14 AD. This was the reign of Caesar Augustus. And as St. Luke said, Crinius was the governor of the Roman province of Syria. Crinius uh, was influential Roman senator and was born in the early 50s before Christ and died in 21 AD after Christ. So according to existing historical data, uh, Crinius was governor of Syria uh, around 6 to 7 AD. And Caesar called for census. And the rule of the census, everyone should go to the place of residence, to where he was born or where his tribe or his family was. And the census here was not just for simple statistics, but to efficiently tax everyone in the Roman Empire. 
verse 4 Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea I want you to imagine the map Galilee in the north in the middle Samaria in the south Judea Nazareth was a small village in Galilee in the north and Judea Bethlehem of Judea was in the south so he will travel from Nazareth of Galilee to Bethlehem which is about 80 miles 80 miles so out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and the lineage of David and the purpose to be registered with Mary his betrothed wife uh, who was with a child so uh, what happened and this census nothing happened haphazardly but it was the economy of God in order actually what prophet Micah prophesied about to be fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ Micah chapter 5 verse 2 he said but you Bethlehem Ephrathah though you are little among the thousands of Judah yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel whose goings forth are from the old uh, from everlasting Bethlehem was called the city of David because it was the place of his birth and the trip from Nazareth in the north to Bethlehem is about 80 miles and this at the time was not a short distance at all it was a significant undertaking Joseph by this act publicly declared that both himself and Mary his wife to have been of the tribe of Judah of the family of David so Jesus will be the son of David according to the flesh the word wife do not disturb you because the marriage in Judea uh, in, in yeah in uh, in Judaism or in Israel went through three stages first the proposal and the engagement second what we call the betrothal third is the marriage itself so the betrothal is like civil marriage so legally she is entitled to all the rights of a wife but the marriage is the consummation of the marriage so yes she was betrothed to Joseph so legally she was called his wife although this marriage was never consummated they never lived together as husband and wife and we believe in the perpetual virginity of Saint Mary the mother of God uh, and Mary here to be registered with Mary his betrothed wife who was with a child was with child means pregnant uh, so although she was pregnant with this child but she was obliged by this decree of Caesar Augustus to come to Bethlehem and here actually Joseph and Mary taught us a lesson in the obedience to civil officials and civil authorities and in um, in Romans chapter 13 St Paul says every authority is from God and speak about civil authority so whoever resists the authority resists God as long as the authority does not ask me something against the will of God like the time when they asked the Christian to worship idols 
So Peter said, no, we ought to obey God more than men. Uh, verse 6 so it was that while they were there the days were completed for her to be delivered she came to a full term so uh, verse 7 and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in a swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The word firstborn is a title of rank and birth order of the first male child born to a woman who had never previously had children. Whether other children will be born or not, the fair, yeah, even if he, this is the only son for this family, he will be called the firstborn. So the firstborn doesn't mean that he's number one among siblings, but means the first child born uh, from this woman, uh, and she never gave birth to, to any children before this uh, child. So the firstborn does not imply that St. Mary had other children. And the firstborn son was to be dedicated to the Lord, as I will explain when we come to the presentation to the temple, as we read in Exodus chapter 13 and Numbers chapter 3, verse 13. Uh, and actually, the church believes that even during the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, St. Mary returned her virginity. As we read in Ezekiel, that there was a door in the east, and the Lord entered into the door and came out of the door, and the door is shut. And all the church fathers said, this door in the east is the virginity of St. Mary. So St. Mary was virgin before, during, and after the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Augustine described the birth beautifully. He said, like a light passing through the glass. So the light does not break the glass. Light passing through glass. Therefore, leaving St. Mary virginity pure. Mary wrapped the child in a swaddling clothes. When a child among the Hebrews was born, first the child was washed in water, then wrapped in a swaddling cloth. There was nothing special in this manner about the Lord Jesus Christ. He was treated like any Hebrew child. And she put him in manger. Manger is not the whole place. Whole place is called the stable, stop. Manger is the place in which they put the way, uh, uh, hmm? the hay, sorry, the hay, not the way. The hay, which is the food for the animals. And why she put him in the manger? Because the hay would warm the child. But there is a beautiful significance here because Jesus is what? The bread of life. And he said, he who feeds on me will live forever in John chapter 6. So the only place uh, for them was in this stable where the animals live. But the manger is the place where the food is placed. بالعربي اسمه المزود مزود جاي من كلمة زاد زاد الطريق الأكل ده ده معنى كلمة مزود زاد because some people think the manger is the whole place no the whole place is not the, it's just the plate in which the hay is placed there was no room for them because this, this small city Bethlehem many many people 
went to Bethlehem to be enrolled. And this shows their poverty and the little attention that was given to this family. If they ha had been rich, definitely they would have been regarded and room would be made for them, especially Mary was pregnant and giving birth. So she will not be left uh, uh, like this. Verse 8, now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Uh, St. Mary in her hymn of praise, she praised God for raising up the lowly. And now the appearance to the shepherd is a confirmation of this fact that God raised, lift up the humble, the lowly. Because in the first century, no group except the tanners were lower than the shepherds in Judean society. So the shepherds and the tanners were considered actually the lowest uh, uh, social status in the first century. Even the shepherds could not give testimony in the court. Cannot give testimony in the court. Did that go yeah. with, uh, with David also? No. لا ده كانوا على الفيرست سنشري يعني اي دونت نو بقى هاو شيبرت وير يعني بيرسيفد ات ذا تايم اوف ديفيد يعني وي نيد تو لوك ات ذا هيستوري اوف ذا تايم اند هاو شيبرت وير بيرسيفد ايفن ات ذا تايم اوف جاكوب وين هي كيم تو ايجيبت ويز هيز تشيلدرن دي سيد وي ار شيبرت اند ذات واز ا يا ديفاينمنت تو ذا ايجيبشن كونسيد ديفاينمنت تو ذا Uh, but here we see how God chose a group of shepherds to be the first witnesses to the birth of the Redeemer, the Messiah. But here actually, maybe you ask ourselves, why were shepherds chosen as first on earth to hear the glorious news of the birth of the Savior of the world? Uh, these simple people were selected as practical illustration uh, that how actually God will exalt the meek and the humble. So even we read in the letter of St. James, God resists the, pow the proud but lifts up the humble. So Christianity here is not about your prestige, your money, your social status. God wants those who humble in heart. Uh, and this is actually maybe the only verse that the Lord made it very direct to learn from him. Learn from me because I am humble and of lowly heart. Another reason, Jesus himself is the true shepherd and the chief shepherd. As he said, I am the good shepherd. That's why this message was it, it proclaimed first to the shepherds. Uh, also, we notice that his birth was not announced only to any shepherds but to the shepherds that were not idle, those who were occupied with their honest vocation, keeping their flocks, they were faithful to their vocation for their job. Uh, also, another reason, these shepherds protected, shepherded, 
and cared for the lambs used in the temple sacrifice. The sheep intended for the daily sacrifices in the temple were fed in Bethlehem pastures. So these shepherds were not just tending any uh, sheep, but the sheep that were taken to be offered as a sacrifice in the temple. So this news of his birth is made by angel. We don't know whether Archangel Gabriel or another angel. The Bible did not tell us which angel. But the angel of the Lord stood before them. The word stood before them suggests a sudden appearance. And the angels comes or came in a glorious appearance. They saw extraordinary light. That's why they were afraid. At the sight of such unusual light and glory about them, and they were not used to such appearances, they were afraid, taken by awe of the majesty of God. And I am sure they said, we are sinners. Who are we that the angel of the Lord and the glory of the Lord is manifested to us? But how the angel started, the angel actually told them, verse 10, then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, <coughs> message of peace. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people, not only to Israel, but to Israel and to the Gentiles. What are these good news? For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So he gives three titles, Savior, Christ the Lord. So do not, af do not be afraid because the angel carried a message of good tidings, glad tidings. And to all the people means this good news, not only for Israel, but for the whole world, Gentiles and the Jews. And three titles were announced. Savior. Savior, whom God had appointed from all eternity, the Son will become a man to save the world. And God promised this Savior, even from the time of Adam and Eve, the offspring of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. And people expected the Savior, expected this salvation. Salvation mainly from our sins, from Satan, and with this salvation, there will be a restoration to the fellowship with God, which was lost in the Garden of Eden. The second title, Christ. Christ means the chrismated one, the anointed one, the Messiah, Al-Masih. This baby, Jesus, is the fulfillment of all all Old Testament prophecies. He is the anointed one. He is the suffering servant of Isaiah. He is the Messiah spoken of by the prophets. He is the promised son of David. And the third title, the Lord. The, the word the Lord here correspond to Hebrew Jehovah, the Lord of all creatures and the Lord of Lords. Then Archangel Gabriel gave them a sign, verse 12. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in a swaddling cloth. But this was a sign because all the children, they wrapped them in swaddling clothes. But what is the sign lying in a manger? Never happened to put a babe in a manger. So this was a, the sign. So as Archangel Gabriel gave a sign to Zechariah and to Mary signifying the, the truth of his word, to Zechariah he will be mute, to Mary he told her, your relative 
Elizabeth, who was barren, now she is pregnant. That's the son was given to Mary. Now the angel is giving a sign to the shepherd, lying in a manger. It is something exceptional that a newborn infant should be found in manger. Verse 13, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Multitude of the heavenly rank, there are thousands and ten thousand and ten thousand of them. Actually, some church father said the multitude here refers to the whole company of angels, all the angels, who were all of them together to sing praises to God and to glorify Him at the birth of the incarnate Savior and to adore Him. Why? Why some church father said all the angels Read what St. Paul read, uh, wrote in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. He said, But when he, the Son of God, again, sorry, when he, God the Father, when he, God the Father, again brings the first begotten into the world, Jesus Christ, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. Let all the angels of God worship him. That's why, the word multitude here may refer to the whole company of the angels, not only just many of them. Zechariah in his hymn prophesied that the Messiah will lead the people to the peace of God. As we read in Luke chapter 1, previous chapter, verse uh, 79. And now the angels are echoing the prophecy of Zechariah, peace on earth, peace on earth. And goodwill toward the men, what does it mean? It is the goodwill of God in sending the Messiah to introduce peace to the earth, to us who are living on earth, and to remove and to abolish the enmity that sin has raised between us and God and to restore a peaceful and a peaceful communication between us and God. Yes. Um, verse 14, glory to God in the highest and, peace, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Um, I've seen some English translations that render it different and they say uh, glory to God in the highest and, and earth, peace on earth toward men of good will yeah I'm coming to this yeah actually that's the last point some translation reads it that, that, that's the translation so I, I will mention what you just you said thank you so it can be the good will of God or people has good will as I will explain right now so, if God be at peace with us, all peace will result from this. I will have peace with myself, peace of conscience, peace with the angels, peace with one another, peace between Jews and Gentiles, if I have peace with God. So, peace here is the foundation of all good. All good will flow to us from the incarnation of the Son of Man, who reconciled us with God after this enmity before, uh, because of the fall of Adam and Eve. But as he said, some translation reads it, it is on earth peace, this peace, to men of good will, means to men who have a good will to God and are willing to be reconciled or to men whom God has a good will to, to be vessels of His mercy.
15. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass which the Lord has made known to us. I want you to notice here that there was no doubt. They did not say, let us go and see if this is true or not. There was no doubt. They said, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing. Uh, and this is actually another reason why God sent the angel to these shepherds. Because of their spirit. The spirit of faith. They believed God. They had no doubt. So, they went, as we, we read in verse 16, and they came with haste, quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger the sign lying in manger now when they had seen him they made widely known they spread the news made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this a child and all those who heard it marveled wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. So, once they found the sign, this humble shepherd start to proclaim the good news to everyone. And here I want to mention the word came with haste is a has a significance. Many times God gave us opportunities and we, we need to seize them at once. Delay or postponing these opportunities may prevent all of us, uh, may prevent altogether the blessing that God intended to us. And these humble people were chosen as the first preachers, first evangelists of the newborn king. And gradually the story got known, not only in the end, but uh, and, and not only among the people who were there, but throughout the whole city of Bethlehem. What, what is the story that was spread? The vision of Zechariah, the story of Mary, the two strange births, Jesus Christ and John the Baptist, and the marvelous experience of the shepherds. Matthew, in his gospel, told us about the wise men. So, following all of this was the arrival of the Magi, the wise men, and their inquiry of a newborn Messiah, uh, whom they had been directed, not by earthly voices, but a star, led them to the neighborhood of Jerusalem. And they came and, and saw the Lord Jesus Christ in Jerusalem. Uh, and the visit of the wise men met uh, Herod, who was very jealous for his throne to be fearful. And the result was he gave immediate direction to kill all the children, the infants of Bethlehem, two years and younger, as we read in the Gospel of St. Matthew. Here the Bible tells us that all people were marveled, wondered about such method, message. But there is nothing mentioned about these people came to the Messiah, came to the manger to, to see Jesus, to investigate further, to worship him as the shepherd. No. 
And unfortunately, this is the attitude of many people until today. When we hear great news, yeah, we marvel at it. We wonder at it. And that's it. We hear, for example, about the appearance of St. Mary in Zatun. We marvel at it. But did we come to the Messiah to worship him? Did we believe? I'm not speaking about us, about the world. Yeah, many non christian heard about the appearance of St. Mary. Actually, she appeared first to non-Christian people, not to Christian. And they wondered, they marveled, and that's it. Nothing more wondering and marveling at what happened. Nothing made them change. Hmm? Nothing made them change. Exactly. Yeah, and, and all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherd. And that's it. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. What all these things that Mary kept? Not only what the shepherd told her about their vision, uh, but uh, everything actually what the angel told her what the angel said to Joseph what she heard from Zachariah and Elizabeth about John the Baptist so uh, Saint Mary actually learned and kept all these things in her heart and she would learn from the vest of the shepherd that the words of her hymn now is realized when she visited Elizabeth and she said my soul magnifies the Lord now she saw how this word that she up uttered in a prophetic way now they are fulfilled two things we need to focus here kept all these things mean St. Mary kept accurate record of all of all of all what happened and no doubt that she shared this accurate record with saint luke who wrote this gospel maybe during the times that saint luke uh, painted a picture for saint mary she told him all these stories uh, about you know all the things that happened around the conception of our Lord Jesus Christ and his birth. Uh, so, St. Mary said to Luke. Also, the second point, ponder to them in her heart. Means continually she was meditating, reflecting on these things in her mind, in her heart. What is the full meaning of all these events? She knows this is only the beginning of a journey. But this journey actually will change the course of human history. That's why the birth of Christ, yeah, the, the history is divided into two eras, before Christ and after Christ. Because his birth changed the whole world to, to, to best. Uh, and and St. Luke here used the contemplation of St. Mary to call all of us to contemplate about the meaning of these events. Not only the meaning of these events in the life of St. Mary, but what these events mean to me personally. Savior, he came to save me personally. Lord, he is my Lord. Anointed Christ, he is anointed to be my high priest, my prophet, my king. So we need to contemplate on all these things in our life. Verse 20. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. Heard from the angel, seen in their visit to Bethlehem. 
to the manger as it was told them. So the shepherd glorified God on account of the birth of the Messiah, praised him, wondering at his grace and the high honor that he put upon them. They counted themselves unworthy to be the first witnesses of his birth. Uh, and how there, what, how there was such agreement between what they heard from the angel and what they had seen when they visited St. Mary and the uh, child Jesus. Uh, so the angel told them, I, 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 I bring you good news that bring joy to the whole world. So the echo of this message actually thrilled their heart and benefited them. Verse 21, And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus. There was a tradition among the Jews to name the child when they circumcise him. Because circumcision means he entered into covenant with God. So that's when they give him name. And Archangel Gabriel, when he appeared to Mary, told her, you will call him Jesus, which means Savior. So he, he, they called his name Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The circumcision and naming is an evidence of the obedience of St. Mary and St. Joseph, as also Elizabeth and Zechariah were obedient to Archangel Gabriel. To Archangel Gabriel, to Zechariah and Elizabeth, they told him, you will name him John, and they named him John. And here, you will name him Jesus, they named him Jesus. So they, they were obedient to the Archangel Gabriel. Uh, did Jesus need the, the circumcision? He was the lawgiver. And because he was the lawgiver, he is not tied to observe the law. Because he is the one who gives the law. But as St. Paul said in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, he was born of a woman born under the law. Why he was born under the law? No one was able to keep the righteousness of the law. So Jesus came and he did all what we must do. As he said to John the Baptist, we ought to fulfill all righteousness. Then this righteousness of him, he gave us, he gave this righteousness to us freely when you are baptized. The Holy Spirit takes from what's mine and gives to you. So the righteousness that we have is the righteousness of Christ. St. Paul said about uh, the Jews that the Jews pursued their own righteousness, but they failed. But those who believed in Jesus Christ, they received this righteousness freely when they actually believed in him and became baptized. So, Jesus also was circumcised to declare to us that he is the son of Abraham, according to the flesh. And God made a covenant with Abraham, Genesis 17, 10, and covenant with Abraham and his seed. So Jesus came from the seed of Abraham. But who are the seed of Abraham? If you are the children of Abraham, do the work of Abraham. So the true seed of Abraham, the true children of Abraham, are those who walk in the faith of Abraham. Not born according to the flesh, but born according to the spirit. And here, the circumcision of the Lord 
is a new step that the Lord takes on the path of the cross. And his submission to the law is for our sake, to fulfill every righteousness in order to give this righteousness freely to us. Verse 22. Now, when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were completed, they brought him, Jesus, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Women who give birth to many children were required to observe 40 days of ritual confinement, after which they were to present themselves to the temple for purification. We can read about this law in Leviticus chapter 12 from verse 1 to verse 6. The primary idea of the law would seem to have been that to witness the blemish of imperfection and sin attaching to every child of man. So when the mother spent these 40 or 80 days in order to witness that every little child or infant is born, is born with corrupted nature with the original sin. Uh, but here for St. Mary, she gave birth to the Holy One. So it was not necessary for St. Mary, because Jesus was not born with original sin or was corrupted nature. Absolutely not. But, so this was not necessary. But St. Mary here she did it out of devout obedience to the law. Unfortunately, now many people argue about this. And St. Mary, who was not in need of it, she obeyed. And many of us now argue, and they want actually to disobey the scripture and to do, to do against the scripture. And the period of purification, according to Leviticus 12, if there was a boy, 40 days from his birth. So at the end of 40 days, Mary went up to the temple to offer the appointed sacrifices for her purification. Also, Joseph presented the holy child Jesus because as his, as his firstborn son, he was to present it to the Lord. You know, so there are two actions here. One action, the purification of St. Mary, although she did not need this purification. Second action, to present Jesus because he is the firstborn son. And he has to be redeemed according to the law. What is the story about presenting the firstborn son and to be redeemed. When God actually struck all the firstborn of Egypt, the tenth plague, then God said to Moses, all the firstborn of Israel, whom I saved their life, I claim the right to be mine. So all the firstborn children of Israel are his. So, now their parents are obliged by the law, except the Leviticus, because the Levites, because the Levites, anyway, they dedicated their lives to God, holy. But the other, from other tribes, they will live their life normal. So they have to go and to be presented to the Lord and then to redeem them at the price of five shekels. 
as we read in Exodus chapter 13, verse 12. And the sacrifice for the purification, the proper offering was lamb for burnt offering and a pigeon or dove for a sin offering. But for the poor, they cannot afford to offer a lamb and a pigeon. So there was an alternative was allowed, uh, which is to offer a pigeon for the burnt offering. So to offer pigeon for or dove for burnt offering and pigeon or a dove for the sin offering. That's why Mary and Joseph being poor, poor, they offered a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. So here the deep poverty of Mary and Joseph is shown in this offering. And this offering has to be made in the temple. So they went to the temple to offer this sacrifice. Uh, we'll stop here at verse 24. God willing, we'll continue tomorrow. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.